Welcome to SpunTales.com, where we spin tales from around the web. This week, we continue the story, The Falling, by J.D. Phillips. Follow J.D. on our socials at Facebook.com slash author J.D. and Twitter.com slash J.D. underscore author. Time passed in a vacuum. He laid still as a few people came and went. One to ask what he wanted to eat for breakfast tomorrow, and another to jiggle some wires on the monitor, and yet another to prick his finger to read the sugar level of his blood. In the end, the sugar test was deemed inconclusive as the machine kept reading error, and the woman didn't feel right poking him over and over again. Likewise, the monitor by his bed was flagged as another probable victim of the electrical incident earlier as it was far easier to believe in a few fried wires than consider the alternative. There had been talk of moving him into another room, but there hadn't been any other single rooms available, and they felt it best he remain alone given his condition. The police hadn't been specific as to the time they'd stop by to interview him, and Pam didn't want anyone else to bother him while he remained under observation. So Hart was left to rest in peace with a handful of snacks and a pitcher of water on his side table until he was due for his next check. Or at least, that was the plan. Until Rita decided to sneak into his room at the end of her shift to watch over him. He wasn't asleep when she entered the room. He hadn't even closed his eyes. But she acted surprised when she looked over to find him staring at her nonetheless. She wasn't supposed to be in here but he didn't mind the intrusion. Closing his eyes to sleep had yielded surprisingly disturbing results. His mind plagued by visions of what looked to be blood being washed away by the storm while images of hollowed eyes flashed behind his eyelids. He'd been afraid to keep them closed any longer. He'd been afraid he might fall back in. Hello, he said. Oh, hi, she replied with a quick laugh. I thought, uh, I don't know what I thought. I guess, I guess I'm not really thinking at all. He arched his eyebrow curiously. I just figured it must be really frustrating and scary not knowing who you are, she said. Lonely, too. No one here to keep you company and all that. She spoke only the half-truth. She did feel badly he didn't have anyone here, but curiosity drove her more than sympathy now. She was still thinking of the newscast, of Turner Road, the way he'd warned Randall to avoid it, the fact that the crash occurred exactly when Randy was due to be on it. So, you really don't remember anything about yourself? She asked, sitting down in a padded chair. He shook his head. I fell, he whispered. Is that all you've got? Nothing before that? He shook his head again. She tilted her head thoughtfully. Something happened in the bathroom earlier, right? When he fell against the guy? Randall. Yeah, that's his name. You saw something, right? You saw that the crash was going to happen? Hart furrowed his brow, unsure how to really answer. I don't know. You must know, she said. I mean, you did know. So you must have seen something, or you must know how you knew. But he didn't know. Not exactly. His crash into Randy had been the same as that with Dr. Dunro, except he'd come away with a feel for Randy's future as well as his past. It wasn't anything he'd actively tried to do, and if not for Rita's present interest, he honestly had thought nothing of it. That's not normal, he asked. Rita laughed. No, that's not normal at all. Oh, but not in a bad way. I couldn't help but wonder if you fell off that bridge trying to stop that other guy from jumping. Like, maybe you'd seen it was going to happen just like you did with Randall and followed him, you know? But it was icy and you both slipped and 
Or maybe he resisted against you and slipped after him or... Oh, God. You didn't know there was another guy brought in along with you, did you? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. Another man. Another man had fallen in the same place he had. Another man had been brought to the same hospital from the same location at the exact same time. Was it someone he'd known before the fall? Someone who'd known him? Where is this man? He asked. Oh, honey, he... He didn't make it. They're guessing now that he probably hit the ice first, which is why you weren't as badly injured when you followed him down. They even checked him again after you, uh... After you woke up. Just to be extra sure he's gone. Oh. He lowered his gaze down toward his blanket. Who was he? Rita shook her head. I don't know if he had any idea or not. I only overheard a little. He nodded absently. I'm sure the police will know more, she added. They'll probably show you a photo of the guy or whatever. Maybe you'll recognize him. The odds of recognizing another man's face when he couldn't even recognize his own were stacked against him. But he nodded again nonetheless. Maybe the man had meant something to him. Maybe seeing his face would make a difference. So I was wondering, if I were to put my hand on your arm, please don't. His heart skipped a beat. It'd only be for a second, Rita replied, sitting up at the edge of the seat. Just long enough, it'll hurt, he said. But only for a second, right? It'd only hurt for like a second, and then maybe, maybe you'd see if I was going to win this audition I did for... No, Hart said. He'd spoken much firmer than either of them had heard him speak before. The tone, combined with the weight of his stare, caused Rita to fall silent mid-sentence. She caught a glimpse of the storm between blinks and it rattled her. I'm... I'm sorry I bothered you, she said, having to force every single word out. I just... I just... There's something about you and I don't... I don't know what I'm trying to say. I should just leave you alone to get some sleep. I can't sleep, he replied, releasing her from his gaze. Bad things come when I close my eyes. She frowned at him. You mean like memories? His body shivered involuntarily at the possibility. I hope not. It's going to be okay, she said, managing to put the professional smile back in place. A cutie like you is sure to have someone out there searching for him. Things will seem better once they've found you. His body shivered again. Randall had said something similar earlier, and Hart found his words equally unsettling. He didn't understand what being decent or cute looking meant, or why that made it more likely that someone was searching for him. He didn't understand why he so disliked the idea of being found. What happens if they find me? He asked. Oh, well, they'll take you home, I guess. Rita replied. Home? She nodded. Yeah. I mean, it's always better to be around something familiar when you're trying to recover memories. You'll be back to your normal self in no time, I'm sure. Rita wondered as much as he did if he'd ever had a normal life to begin with. But she kept that thought to herself. He appreciated her effort to make up for coming here with less than pure intentions by trying to reassure him. It hadn't worked, of course, but the sentiment was nice. 
Listen, if it turns out you don't have any place to go at first, I can help you out, she said, rising to her feet. Not, not because I want you to try to do whatever it is you do for me. Just because. Seems like you need all the help you can get. That smile. The smile that peeked around the corner of his mouth was genuine, rather than attempted imitation. Despite the many things he didn't know about himself and the world, he found Rita's offer did somehow make him feel more at ease. What is your audition? He asked. Her face lit up from the inside out as she sat back down, her entire body shaking now with excitement. You may not know it, but there's a theater downtown called The Bunker, right? And they're setting up to do a production of Hedwig and the Angry Inch next month. They said you could email them the video of yourself singing, and if they'd like it, you'd get a call for the audition. I've never done anything like this before, but I've always wanted to, you know? And I just love, love, love Hedwig, so I figured, why not? They said to give it a week or two to hear it back, but it's been a week and I'm getting super anxious, you know, doubting myself. Like... Maybe it was a mistake doing a Barnes Courtney song in the video instead of one off the Hedwig soundtrack. They didn't say the song had to be from Hedwig, mind you, but I bet that's what most people did. And looking back now, it probably would have made so much more sense. And good Lord, I am rambling. I'll stop. I'm sorry. He'd understood very little of what Rita had just said, but the emotion behind her words registered clearly. He didn't get any sense one way or another if she'd done well in her video, or if those attached to the show had enjoyed watching it, but Rita definitely had enthusiasm, and he thought that ought to count for something. It's okay, he said. No, it's just one of those things where you don't realize how badly you want it until it seems like you might not get it, you know? No, he replied, shaking his head. He couldn't recall ever having wanted anything. Hmm. Well, I bet you did before you hit your head and died in the river. I bet that's what brought you back. There's something you weren't ready to give up. Maybe. You'll see. I'm right, she said with a smile. Till then, you want to see my video? Thanks for listening to SpunTales.com. SpunTales is a heathen digital podcast. If you'd like to be on a podcast or start your own, contact us at info at heathendigital.com. Be sure to follow us on our socials at facebook.com slash spuntales and twitter.com slash spuntales. Thanks for listening.